Today, we are going to experiment with Reaper wheels on a Creighton EXB. Now, I'm positive that this is not a smart idea, but I really need to know what happens. And there's two main things that I wanna to study today. Number one is, how do they actually perform and can they actually be useful in the real world? And number two is just how dangerous are these things? The car these are going on is the Creighton EXB, which is an absolute beast of an RC car. This thing can go over 50 miles an hour and it's got enough power to do a standing backflip and all sorts of other crazy things. This probably would have been much safer on something slower like a Summit, but we're already committed to this one, so let's go see what happens. And before that, I wanna note, don't try this at home for obvious reasons. The idea for these wheels came from some other YouTube videos out there that do exactly this, but they're testing on different things like trucks, four wheelers, and even some video game stuff. I wanna test it on an RC car, and like I said, I do actually want to understand if there is utility here, and I'm gonna cover a lot more of that later on in the video, but let's go have some fun first. So I slapped together a quick design and got straight to work. So the first red flag is that these things look just like ninja throwing stars. These wheels went together really well. There's four spike plates all bolted to a central hub. Now that center hub is 3D printed, so I expect that to absolutely be the weakest link, which is why every single spike plate and spacer are designed to engage with these lugs around the perimeter of that center hub. It's given me a ton of shear area to distribute the load really well, which is really important with 3D printed plastics because they have really low shear strength. And immediately after bolting everything together, I realized they were twice as heavy as the old wheels, which is not good. Not only did the mass double, the bulk of the mass moved further from the center of rotation as compared to the old tires, which increased the rotational inertia even more. I expect the torque through the drivetrain to much more than double, which is gonna put a ton of stress on the driveline. So hopefully we don't break anything, but we're already committed at this point. So let's slap these bad boys on and go see what happens. That's right, I named it Bone Saw. And as you may expect, on these hard concrete surfaces, we get absolutely no grip, so we just slide all over the place. But we do get some beautiful showers of sparks. Now let's get to testing out in the grass and on the dirt. And what I noticed immediately was, as you would expect, we get a ton of grip. Even with these heavy tires, I can flip the thing over if I just hit the throttle too hard. But more importantly, I am tearing up the grass and the dirt, which is actually something I was hoping to see. You see, whenever I plant grass seeds in this patchy, crappy backyard, I have to manually loosen the dirt and all of the dead grass. But if I have something like this, it sort of acts to loosen up all the dirt itself, which improves my soil contact, 
which means I get more grass growing from the seeds I plant. And if you look at the ground in these bare spots, you can see it does tear it up. Now, I don't know that this is actually a good idea. I'm probably just gonna wreck a $500 car driving around back and forth, but at least it's fun while it happens. Now, I will say driving in dirt is very, very stressful on every component in this thing, even the turning servo. Even when you steer, it doesn't matter. You're gonna hear your servo saver working, but your wheels aren't gonna turn anywhere because it just can't overcome that much resistance until you start moving. Now for the part I think all of us are probably waiting for. How dangerous is this thing? I'll start out by saying these wheels spin at thousands of RPM, which is pretty much like an angle grinder. And those things cut through metal, concrete, and all sorts of stuff. So I think it goes without saying, we know this can be dangerous. So I repeat, don't try this at home. And up first we have Turkey, which gets totally demolished. But let's go ahead and update our setup a little bit better so we can see more of what's happening. And I want you to notice how when it hits one wheel, it'll throw it right at the other wheel, causing just maximum carnage. Up next, we have leftover tacos. And this one is a magnificent display of how that front wheel will grab it and launch it high speed at that back wheel and the back wheel is gonna absolutely destroy it. I mean, this thing just explodes all over the place. Took me forever to pick it up out of my backyard. Third thing, banana. I was surprised this banana actually holds together pretty well because of the peel. But of course it was still no match for the Reaper wheels after a couple passes through the system. And we're gonna end this one on scrambled eggs. This was a beautiful display of messiness. I don't know what I expected, but I didn't really expect it to kind of go the pattern it did. And watch again, the back wheel catches that shell that was thrown by the front wheel and finishes it off. Even just cleaning this thing up and washing all the egg yolk off was somehow mesmerizing and slow motion as you see the wheels throw the water all over the place. So that's all the damage we're gonna do for now. But overall, these tires were pretty impressive to me. I didn't really expect it to perform well at all in the dirt. I thought it was gonna get stuck a lot more and it really didn't. Um, this might actually do well in something like ice, but honestly, if I were using these as actual wheels, I would shorten the spikes up quite a bit and I'd try and get the weight way down so it just wasn't overloading the system. But if I wanted to use this as an actual lawn instrument, I would redesign the entire thing and probably adapt it for my robot chassis so that I can add a lot more weight and it's a lot more controllable just because of the way it skid steers. What do you think would have been the coolest thing to feed into these Reaper wheels? Maybe if we get this thing back out, we'll give it a go. And on another note, I have a lot of parts coming in for round three of the fan car. We're gonna try and demolish our last zero to 60 time and just really set the bar as high as possible. That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I can't wait for the next project.